Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to talk about the Achilles heel of the Gen 5 LT engine by Chevrolet. If you're new to this channel, my name is Anthony. I drive a Camaro SS1 LE. And if you're interested into following my build, be sure to check out other videos on my channel. But by the end of this video, you should be aware of the pros and cons of the Gen 5 LT engine, man. So let's jump straight into it. Okay, so we're gonna jump straight into this because y'all know making an engine like the LT4 requires experience and Chevrolet got that in the bag, you hear me? Like they have been working on this engine and have been known for iconic VAs for a very long time. So for example, like the LS family, man, y'all know about the LS. If you haven't, you've been sleeping under a rock because the LS motors from the one all the way to the nine has been iconic. And the LS9 that came out in the Corvette ZR1 is top tier with the supercharger. And they learned from that motor to create the LT4 that we know of today. So how much power the LT4 makes? We're just gonna jump straight into those basics. It makes 650 horsepower, 650 torque. It makes all of that on a direct injection motor on nine pounds of boost, man. Nine pounds of boost is very impressive coming from a, a factory with the stock blower that's i think is 1.7 it's a 1.7 eaton blower drop a comment below if i'm wrong on that but i believe i might and i'm going off the head with this but that is pretty impressive right there also it's a small block gm is known for having some of the best small block motors that's around man the fact that they made 650 horsepower out of a small block is very, very impressive in today's time. So what did GM do to make sure that the LT4 engine is running efficiently to handle that nine pounds of boost? Well, what GM did was they did forged pistons and rods, forged crankshaft to make sure that the inertia inside the engine is lightweight and can be able to handle that type of power that they push into the motor versus the younger brother like the LT1, the Achilles heel of that is the pisses and rods and the AFM delete. If y'all wanna know more information about that, check out my video that I did here talking about the LT1 engine. But in this one, we're talking about the LT4. So to run boost at nine pounds, they changed the compression ratio to 10 to one if you guys didn't know, to handle that type of power, man. So that's pretty nice and efficient coming out of GM. And for a small block motor, you can't beat that. So let's talk about like this motor, the pros, like what vehicles that it comes in. So it comes in the 2015 to 2019 Corvette. It comes in the 2017 to 2024 Camaro ZL1, ZL1 1LE. It comes in the 2022 CT5V Blackwing, and it comes in the 2022 and beyond Cadillac Escalade B, man. So very small platform that they put these vehicles in, but it's nice. The only difference between all of these is they, they slightly tuned it a little bit. I think the Cadillacs makes a little bit more horsepower than the Camaro, coming in at 668 horsepower versus the Camaros at 650 horsepower. And the best part about these engines is that it's a dry sum. So whenever you get to push it very hard on the track or anything of that nature, like it keeps the engine well lubricated. And one thing that's good about the LT4 engine versus its counterpart, I would say the LT1 engine, is that you can efficiently and effectively run a thousand horsepower on the LT4. You cannot do that efficiently and effectively on the LT1, man, because you will shoot a rod out that motor unless you do piston rods. And that's pretty impressive alone right there. But with that, we're gonna jump into like, what is some of the mods that you can do before I get into like the common problems of the LT4. So what are some mods that you can do to your LT4 Camaro or Cadillac or Corvette that you can make it better and get some horsepower gains out of it. One of the first things you can do is do a supercharged lead upgrade. This will increase the airflow of that supercharger and is guaranteed to get you up to about 20 horsepower. After that, pair it with a nice throttle body and a cold air intake. So you get one of those and then sits with supercharged lead. That is going to be nice as well. Last but not least, while you're generating all this horsepower, we all know that the exhaust manifolds 
coming from the factory is good, but it's better to have those two inch American racing headers or the Cook's headers, ceramic coated and a tune. And the car will make some nice horsepower. You should be looking at between like 800 horsepower, I would say effectively just doing those couple mods. But also doing those mods also comes with the common failures, which I'm about to talk about now. And actually this will happen before you do these mods, such as the very first thing is limp mode. What the hell? And the supercharger will generate a lot of heat. And Corvette Z06 is known for this, man. Like if y'all check out that Corvette form, you can hear a lot of those guys complaining about the LT4 engine overheating, going into limp mode and just being forced to be in reduced engine power. So that's the number one common issue with the LT4 engine. The second thing with the LT4 engine, the valve springs. The valve springs is the weakest link in the LT4 engine. With ported heads and polished and CNC, you're going to eliminate that bottleneck. Once you change that, you have pretty much just bulletproof the LT4 engine and it can make whatever power that you want to make. So I have seen 800 horsepower all the way up to like 1200 horsepower, man. And that is phenomenal. Noticing that it's just very minimal issue. So that is the Achilles heel of the LT4 engine, man. It's very not that much like the counterpart of the LT1, the naturally aspirated setup. That has a little bit of uh, its own quirks, but this is the quirks of the LT4 engine, man. They both share the valve springs and the valve train, so that's why it's an issue. But other than that, man, the LT4 engine is pretty solid. The failure rate is very low. Oh, and one more thing before I jump out of here. 2017 and 2018, the oil pumps are garbage, man. So be sure to get you a K-Tech oil pump, man, because those are the model years that are most likely to fail. 2019 and beyond, I think they fixed it with a newer one, but for sure, 2017 and 2018. So that's the last one. And But these are some things to look out for, man. So if you guys like this video, y'all know what to do. Hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.